whiskey on a car. That's it. Heavy note. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Five Boys in a Business, a podcast where we talk about the family, the business, the many shenanigans involved. You can catch us on any of the podcast channels or where you listen to podcasts. Um, and I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And we have Harrison back there behind the ones and the twos. Um, Sixes and sevens. And um, we're here most Mondays. So uh, don't forget to check out the merch store, ASPCMerch.com. <clears throat> and we're here again on a Monday. Big shout out to my sister, big sister Tiffany. She uh, showed us where we exist on, I think she has an Android. The podcast. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So shout out to her for showing us that. And that's how she consumes the podcast. That's so, how she listens to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're on all, so. the, all the podcast channels. So. Absolutely. And with that, Parlor's back. There you go. Yeah, try to get on Parlor Parlor this morning. Didn't you work. You can't. You can't do it unless you were an existing customer. I'm an existing customer. You were an existing customer. Yeah. So, because the way they I can't read take it, new people. No, they weren't at first. Like the first thirty days, they were going to re. Harrison, correct me if I'm wrong about this. I think they were re. Basically, doing everybody that had been a previous customer, right. and then after day thirty, then they were adding new people. Uh. I don't know if it was to keep. Going sideways because there was going to be so much traffic. I don't know. They were gone an awful long time. So, um, 30 days, 30 plus days. 30 plus days. That is horrible what happened to Parlor. Days. But I will tell you, that's the best thing that could have happened to Parlor, too. Then, how many people had I never agree. heard of it? Now they do. Now they do. Now they know about it. They're going to explode. Um, by Parlor stock. Yeah. So, I don't think they're public, though. No. I'm sure. I don't think so. So, anyway. But, um, yeah, so anyway, there's that. <laughs> I don't know how we got started on power. Oh, because we were talking about podcast jams. Right. Um, so this weekend, Madeline went to pick out her wedding dress. Madeline is Harrison's fiance, for those that don't know. And she found her dress, which she was really yes exciting. yes to the dress. Say yes to the dress. Those shows are so boring. Um, and there she is saying yes. I said yes to the dress. Look how cute she is. Um, and so, um, said yes to the rest, yes to the dress, no to the ring. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and so, yeah, we don't, we only know some minor details. We are not privy to enough information to be able to draw a picture. We know that it's a light color. We know it's ivory. We know it's a light color. Yes. It's a light color. Um, so yeah, pretty exciting. Pretty exciting stuff because it's already February and the wedding's in October. So Actually, it's funny because when we got engaged in March, mid-March, like the 14th of March, I think, 95, your mother had to scramble to get everything ready to go because we went from zero to 60. In, yep, nine months. You guys got it all done. But it, it helped that we were getting married in the dead of winter in Indiana. <laughs> Not a lot of traffic at those places. <laughs> Maybe there wasn't a lot of people. Yeah, Two we days before Christmas. We weren't fighting for a lot of uh, yeah. reservations, I suppose. I'm sure that your, your mom and dad met with the the, uh, the advanced guy, and he flips open the calendar. It's wide open <laughs> <laughs> all month. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so pretty fun. Exciting. Exciting stuff. We, uh, we uh, I'd never been to, um, we, we're wine drinkers, but we never... Uh, have been to a wine tasting before and we were recently invited to a virtual wine tasting. Right. And um, it was a really neat experience. It was uh, a Napa Valley winery. And as you can see, those bottles are all empty, so it was really good. And um, Listen, they said we only had 72 hours to consume this. I know, this. you have to. It's, it's, it's so perishable. So we were dead set. So Madeline helped us last night. We were dead set finishing them off. So it was cool because they met with us via Zoom and they gave us, it was really neat because they gave a history of the winery. It's and, Forte, isn't it? Forte Winery? Was that I the think. name of it? I believe I don't know. that's the name of it. Um, but anyway, it was really cool. He gave a history of the grapes, and the guy was really entertaining. And um, he said that, he, that we were his like eighth or whatever. I was of like, the day. I how do you like, do this all do day? <laughs> yeah. So. You're not lit by the end of the day, slurring your words. Uh, but anyway, he gave us that, and it was cool because um, I've never actually sat down and compared wines like two Cabernets side by side. Right. And he told us things about aging of Cabernets and pinots and all that stuff and this whole sideways the movie um segue on the merlots and all that stuff and right the, the dessert wine was called dolce it was really good yeah um probably the best dessert wine i've ever had um yeah so it was great it was a lot it was a lot of fun definitely we'll uh so stick now up some we're of theirs. planning we got to do something with a bunch of other families virtual wine tasting madeline last night she goes we should do a whiskey taste i was like how does that work you can't drink that much whiskey unless you're doing a spit cup or something 
Okay, no, you're just drink sipping it. You don't have to drink the whole thing. Oh, okay. You'll take shots. <laughs> Good Lord. He'd be under the table. We have uh, a fourth whiskey. Where's Richie? Uh, <laughs> snoring. <laughs> snoring under the table. Uh, Where's yeah. that? So, um, so then we were like, let's do all the alcohols. And Adam and I were like, let's do tequila. Let's do this. Let's do that. So, yeah. you know, now we're on. We've got a new thing to mess around with. Yeah, it was really cool. The neat thing I thought was that... Um, even though COVID has had a lot of challenges, it's brought to the forefront those things that probably otherwise wouldn't have been in vogue. Well, you know? yeah, because you can't travel to Napa Valley. Yeah, I never heard of that winery. Like easily. And so now, though, you can just do it this way. Watch. I mean, this may have been something that was available prior to, but I didn't know about it. It was really cool. So they ship the wine to you, and you take it out, and they have, like, the, you know. Descriptors. Yeah, and... like, look for hints of this and this and this. And um Gary Vaynerchuk's got this funny thing because that's what he he had a wine library. He had they, that right. was his first in 2006. He started this YouTube channel, and he said, you know, some people are. He kind of talks about the stodginess of um, of uh, the wine community, you know, the mm -hmm. critic community. And he would get on there, and he said that you know people would talk about, oh, it's got hints of this and you know this and hints, hints of. Cinnamon and he goes, he, he's on there, and he's gone. And, I, I taste what you might call it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've been getting a whatchamacallit taste in here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, uh, they do. They have those, all those words. Like it's a hint of citrus with. What? What is it? Uh, one of my, one of my favorite lines of somebody uh, critiquing a wine or just like, you know, trying to explain what it tastes like is from the office or Michael. He drinks wine. He's like, Hmm, has a very oaky afterbirth. <laughs> After birth, <laughs> I think sometimes though you read that stuff and you you're like you made that up, didn't you? You're just trying to sound smart. Oh god, I don't get any of that stuff. But uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do that. And uh, I did one thing I learned was that Bordeaux are a combination of multiple types of red wine. Merlots? No, Bordeaux or whatever. Bordeaux. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was funny because the people. Why are you laughing? Is <laughs> Oaky afterbirth. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh gosh, that show is something else. Though. It is fun. What's funny though is that I think you know it, it's very much an art form, and I thought that the guy had a, he said guidance, not gospel, and it stuck yeah. with me. I was like, he said because everybody's palate's different. Well, you know what? You might like something that somebody else doesn't like, right? And, yeah, exactly. So it was cool. It was cool too. Uh, and he said something else because don't buy wine at the grocery store. He goes, go to Ted's wine store and and have them recommend something. Right. So, and it was funny because he said, um, we take good bottles of wine. What was the story he told? Take good bottles of wine to a party. Mm -hmm. You see what else is there first. And then you're like, nope, this one, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like really <laughs> he crappy He takes wine. two bottles of wine and one's a good one and one's like an you know, not so bad one, but it's not as good as the other one. Yeah. And so if everybody's putting wine on the table and it's all the not so good ones, he puts out the not so good one, right. holds the good one. He goes, cause everyone's going to drink the good one. Yeah. You know, that, you know, um, and leave the other ones. And so anyway, and I didn't realize, um, how important it was to age Cab Cabernets. Right. I had no idea. I just thought, eh, well, yeah, well, we're pretty illiterate. Yeah. I don't know anything about any stuff. About so. <laughs> I felt kind of dumb actually. The crowd we were with, they're like, "Oh, this is this. This is this is similar to a Bordeaux or whatever." And I was like, "I don't know what this is. I know what these are. I've had them, but I don't." Yes, I can tell you that I can drink them. And right, it'll taste good. Yeah, but so, uh, anyway, yeah. So yeah, it was fun so time, was fun. and uh, yeah, good weekend. Um, had fun with everybody. We did get to go out to eat with Calvin, and he went to our we were, we we spent the weekend in Tennessee, and we went to our favorite place to eat which is called the cadillac grill and it's um cadillac grill. it's like um it's in a, a small it's on the main drag in rockwood which is to say <laughs> the one four laner in rockwood yeah and uh it's uh the guy that runs a good business though it's like a sports bar he's yep. put it's not like a dive place i mean it's, no he's done a good job with it they've got yeah. like tvs behind the bar and it's like has a legit bar and yeah and um so yeah it's cool the food is good um it's it's like upscale pub food yeah um but they have a dart uh like um one part of the building is for larger groups, and that's where they have pool table. What's this? Yeah, pool table. What's a slider thing? I don't that know, sliding game, Harrison. It's like the. It's like sawdust or something. It's on got it. sawdust on it, and you slide the the weights. You know what I'm talking about? Shuffleboard. It's like a form of shuffleboard, basically. But well, anyway, Calvin 
wanted and finally i got persuaded to go throw darts with him so i grabbed two darts he grabbed one because i was like we're not taking all of them and um we threw a couple rounds and we were just kind of messing around and he threw one last one and then i was like oh my god did that just hit the center and it did and then he i took pictures we took a picture of it and then of him below it i did and uh it was cute because he um he he uh, I said we have to end there. That was that's the best shot of the night. There he is. <laughs> yeah. He was so excited. Yeah. Uh that is a yeah, it's a fun place to go cuz the cousins were there and they played darts with him and Yeah, they put us in this booth. We thought we were going to be in the big room. Right. And they put us in this booth. I mean, it was a big there was, booth. Yeah, but there were four there of no us on room. each side. It was Just hilarious. Eating, you know. Yeah. So, it was fun. I mean, the food was good. I I don't think I've had anything. But I thought the fried pickles were really good. Yeah. Those are, but appetizers, they never bring you enough. I know. is not weird. What, what's the one thing that comes on sticks that's really good? It's like bacon wrapped in. It's got cream cheese and jalapenos knocky. and something. It's not hermanaki. It's. No. Speaking of hermanaki, that sounds good. Oh. Ale Emporium hermanaki wings. Yeah, you can go in there now. I don't, I don't know. We haven't heard hermanaki in a long time. I do have a PSA, though, with all the snow last week. Move. That. Well, yeah. Move, that. move south. Um, but, um, you know, with dogs going outside and not being used to, um, the snow from like an exercise standpoint, oh. it's not uncommon for the dogs to show up very sore and uncomfortable after playing outside and they all want to go out. They're just like little kids right. and jump and run in the snow, but then they pay for it the next day. Right. So, especially if you have a dog with arthritis, be aware of that so that you can pre-treat them with an anti-inflammatory. Why are you laughing? I'm thinking of a dog with snowshoes, but proceed. <laughs> so I'm just saying if that happens again and we get snow, which hopefully it won't, and your dog, you notice that your dog was sore this past time, it's likely to happen again. So you can pre-treat them with something to keep them comfortable. Got it. Just like us, if we're going to go out and shovel a ton of snow, then you might take some ibuprofen ahead of time so that you're more comfortable that next day that evening there is nothing worse than shoveling i mean i've lived up here for 20 something 20 plus years 25 years there's nothing worse than going outside and looking at the snow and looking at your lone shovel and after you've been out there half an hour going i've not even made it in this yeah i've got forever so i will be here forever so that's why we have all the boys now yeah doesn't help it does. doesn't help <laughs> Guess who shoveled the driveway this past time? This guy, the biggest no, guy. No, Trevor did. Trevor he, helped shovel the driveway some. So well, he did the neighbors, but yeah, we did the neighbors. That's okay. I actually have, I actually have a question regarding the snow and and yes, dogs sir. and how to keep your yard like intact or looking good. I guess I looked outside in the backyard because the snow is melting now, and it looks terrible. Yeah. It will. There's poop everywhere, yeah. and it is disgusting. Well, how do you guys go about keeping it? You can't. Like once can't, the snow melts, then you go out and clean it up. Then but, you're gonna have to go out and shovel it, scoop the yard. Especially when you have multiple snows like that, where you have like yeah. snow and snow because you can't see it. So usually, once the snow melts, you'll get a little bit. The what I do is I go out, so the snow all melts and it gets kind of slushy out there, and the poop gets soft. Then what you do is go out the next day because it's usually then frozen again, uh, and it just. It comes right off the grass, and you just scoop it and throw it away. Right. Versus scooping it when it's slushy. Yeah. Yes. So let it refreeze and then scoop it. Yeah, either way, it's gross, but just a little tip. Well, tip. Pro tip. Another PSA. Pro tip for the the pro scooper. No doggy outhouses in the backyard. Actually, went outside the other day to like clean up some of the gutters if they were stuffed with ice or whatnot to get it out. And I go to the side of the house, and there's like a four and a half foot ice. Oh, wow. I know. So I did what any what any reasonable man would do, and I got it down, and I kind of played with it for a bit, you know? <laughs> They'll put great. your eye out, you know? I had like a sword. It was great. <laughs> I probably looked ridiculous out there, but, you know, it was fun. Oh, was it two winters ago that I came outside, and I was like, what in the world? And our gutter was, was full of ice and had torn away from the house. I'm like, of course. Of course this happens here. Of course it does. I couldn't get anybody out to do it. To fix it, finally I had to because I was worried about snow melt and rain coming in, you know, into the attic. So they got it fixed, thank God. It came out and it was bone dry. Came out and did well, it. Well, next, next um, <laughs> Monday is March first. So thank God, we're almost made it through February. Yeah, it's my birthday month. Yep, yes, it is. So what are we doing 
So what are we doing for the first 16 days leading up to my birthday? Um, don't know. It's not the 16 days of Harrison's birthday. Well, it's the month. Days. It's the month of Harrison's birthday, right? I remember the day Harrison was born. Running to the hospital because it's our first child. We didn't know what we were doing clearly, and we get there and and uh, Harrison Harrison was born. And he had a scowl on his face. His head went on his face ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, like so having having been in Tennessee this past weekend, do you have any good stories? Um, I have stories. I don't know if they're good. You do have some stories? Yeah. Do you have ones that um, are worthy of the do 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 Richie's stories? Do, 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 do. Well, I can tell you a story. Yeah, I'll tell you a story. All right. So we were in Tennessee and um, we have a, a UTV there and um, we were hauling rock in this, you know, because there's a ditch there and it had been somewhat neglected over the past couple of decades. So we've been slow in the process of kind of rebuilding it. And we had the bright idea to, well, let me back up. So we have a cart down there, right? <laughs> I have a cart and I had this bright idea to go and put line the cart with wood because I thought I don't want to mess up the cart with all these rocks. So I go to Lowe's. Finally get home with all the wood and we're putting it together and your mom's over there shaking or Emily's shaking her head over there going, this isn't going to work. <laughs> and uh, I bought a couple of things wrong. So we got that done and um, turns out that it didn't, it may have protected maybe, but um, because the, the driveway is on a hill, I, I was like being very um, strict about chalking these wheels. Cause I'm like, if this thing goes, this cart's going to going down. It's not stopping. All right. And then Trevor's like, and he comes up and he does, he stops one time. He drove it up to the top of the hill about halfway up. And he's like, and I said, you got to chalk those wheels, buddy. And then he goes, the brakes on. I was like, yeah, until it's not, you put there as a backup and I actually showed him yeah. later. I took the brake off and I said, you see how it stops? He goes, Oh, I was like, that's what you want. If the brake for whatever reason, whatever Let's reason, or whatever, yeah. you know, so, uh, we moved a lot of rock this past weekend and we could definitely feel it after we did it. Getting a little too old, a little too much mileage to do that kind of day Hard after day labor. manual labor. Um, okay, but what's your story? What? <laughs> My story? Yes. The question is, Dad, is it going to hold? Is, is it going to hold? hold? Is it going to hold? What? What is the? What is? Is it going to hold? That's. The, we were laughing so hard. <laughs> and the leadership meeting goes. Somebody no, came in and goes. What is the likelihood that Rich? Oh, they sat down and they looked at the dashboard numbers and they go, he keeps saying it's not going to hold, but we're at the last week of the month. And, and so then they, I said, everybody, what's the over under on Richie saying it's not going to hold. And so then everybody's like, he's going to say it, not going to say it, say it, not going to say it, not going to, you know, whatever. And so right. everybody had a thing. And so then when you're on speakerphone, that's why we were bringing it up. Right. And Nicole's like, well, he kind of mentioned it. And then when we said something about, <laughs> is it going to hold? It's not going to hold. Then it was into the classic Richie description of, Non-committal. Well, 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 well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What I'm saying is, it was this, really funny because it was is, perfect. Okay, when I have done this as long as I have, you have to know with a reasonable degree of certainty what your month and numbers are going to look like. Right. So when I look at that and I go, you could do this yeah. or you could do that. Yeah, we're not critiquing. <laughs> no, it just makes me laugh because they're like, what's it going to hold? I was like, yeah, but that's, the, on, that's the value behind <laughs> looking at that stuff. That's, from not, no, that's oh, not what we were laughing no, about. We're, no, no, we're critiquing. You just, just, you just said it. Mul you've said it multiple times in the past right. It's week, so, so it's our, just our, funny our, because you're like, it's not going to hold. You know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, I'm saying, but I've said it over multiple times over the past several weeks because this has been a very unusual February. And when I look and I go, these are the numbers month to date, but that's not going to hold for the month, most likely. So don't look at that and say so you're going to be a here when in fact you're going to be here. So the Buccaneers are going to win the Super Bowl. Yes, they did. <laughs> okay. God, you guys are jerks. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious because ever since I pointed it out, now Harrison's like, he laughs because it's it's a you thing. It's a Steveism. It's like a Richieism. Ah, uh, okay. And so and that's what we're laughing about. It's not a bad thing. It's just a funny thing. It's funny because we will say, oh, so it is going to hold. And, and then, then you know, yeah. And, and so I would respond like, ha, funny, guys. But dad's like, well, actually, you know, you think it is going to hold. Oh, it might hold. And there's the reasons why. And you go right. And so like, that's like a Richie-ism. Okay. It's like Steve-ism. Yeah, but, you know, the, I don't, I, yeah, anyway. Those, I mean, oh, no. mostly this month because February is such a weird month. 
Yeah. There've been so many unexpected things over the past year that, I mean, there were there were months in, in months past where I would look and I I, you kind of have an idea, but you don't really know. Right. Things fall off, and if it falls off, <laughs> what are you laughing at now? I'm not laughing. I'm just laughing because you know I don't just because you're making me laugh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Oh gosh. So. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know what the hell it had to do with the story, but. No, but you're right. That is exactly right. February has been a weird month. So yeah. there. And I think the hardest thing is, and I would love to know how companies do it. I mean, projection wise, how do you, how do you know? I mean, what, I mean, it's probably just a reasonable, reasonable well, degree of certainty, you know. I think before <laughs> there, there was a reasonable degree of certainty because it was pretty predictable before what you could expect i think that the past year now going on well yeah now yeah, going on a year. year is is not because it's been so different right and so it's predictable for the year like the the year over itself has been predictable but then from God, year to so? year i don't think so well i think from starting i, I would in, never have guessed no no but once it, once things changed it's been predictable. Yeah, I mean, you get, ever you, since then, you get enough May, data points. From April to to now. And if, if if I would say things like, you know, you have a week's worth of a week out of four's worth of data, that's not enough to draw any conclusions. But what I think is not predictable is year over year. So what's going to happen next year? What's going to happen a year from that year? Like some of those things, I think, are hard to predict. Well, I, I I do think that there are there's a bit more complexity, but then it comes down to like capacity, demand, overall economic health, you know, within your area. I mean, if you're in an area like Kokomo, it's very plant heavy in terms of employment. A couple of the plants go, or something happens. I mean, then that's going to affect things. If you have a right. very diverse workforce like you have here, then it's different. Right. I mean, I've always I've said that before. I mean, in a way, it was obvious that there was going to be a slowdown because of the broader economic decline of what was going on. Right. Even with COVID, I remember thinking, you have these huge. They kept talking about GDP, and it's like people are still spending money. Unlike in a way where things just fell off a cliff right. for the whole year because everybody was scared. And I mean, you had this, this kind of global collapse, basically. You didn't have that here. I mean, other places you might have, but here you didn't have that. That's why last year when I'd look at it, I, I wasn't, I was never terribly concerned once we got to a certain point, April, something like May. I was like, this, people are, I mean, we're still able to operate. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's where I think when you, when you say things like, or when you'll say things like it's tough to predict year to year. Once you have enough data points, you could say, okay, on average over the past three to five, this is what we've done growth wise. So that we can expect with a reasonable degree of certainty to continue that trend. Right. Assuming you have capacity, assuming you have other things like that. Do you have aggregate demand? Do you have population growth? Do you have all those things that go into it? So if you don't have those things, if you're in a, a, a community that's not growing, then there's only so many, you only slice the pie so many ways. Right. If you have competitors there, and I think that's where a lot of places run into trouble, because I mean it's it, great, but that's when you go and look at a different strategy. You're going to go into satellites. You're going to do something else. Whereas here we haven't had to. I haven't really had to do that. Right. So, and I've never ever. I mean, we don't talk about the business much here, but th that's one of the strategies I've never really been able to wrap my head around is 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 that when is it feasible? When is it necessary to create satellites like a hub and spoke kind of? Um, thing and um, I don't know. It seems like people just open places up and then they, they never go away. So no, I agree. Yeah, that pet wellness I think is a good example of that. They just open up a bunch over the course of a few years, opened up several different locations, and they all seem to be doing okay. Well, I think they have a different objective. Oh, I know, but I'm saying demand for veterinary services in general. Right. I mean, it's not like you open up a buggy store and it goes. It's just you know what I mean. Right. I mean, there's a demand for that service. No, yeah, I get that. So, especially, yeah, I do agree. You know that there's a demand for veterinary services around here. And the only challenge I think you could have is where do you place it so that you don't, you don't, um, predate's the wrong word, but you don't. Yeah, basically, don't take away from your. Yeah, you don't want to take that away. I mean, you don't want to overlap it so much that you're taking away from it. Now, it all goes into one pot. I mean, it's all one qu company, but you don't, you have to be careful. But, yeah, but you've in increased expenses then, and. Yeah, and it's that. and it's a long and it's unlike. I mean, it's it's uh if if our experience over the you know the first the startup period, it's a little different because you have that brand kind of cachet and stuff that goes with it. So if someone's near, they probably heard of you, and it's you're better at marketing, you're better at everything 
versus when you first started, but it is a long, it's an uphill climb. It's probably a 10 year play. Right. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, it's some, not something you do and then, you know, you just explode. Right. So it, it um, it, it's a long slog. It's a, it's a much uh, longer term strategy. But then your old boss used to say, because we I remember talking to him years and years ago about this, Don Kreider at Kreider, or uh, Don Kreider at uh, Kreider Vet Clinic. He said, "It's it's easier to just focus on one Entity. basket and all your eggs instead of just instead of several." Yeah. So, I would agree with that. Be good at what you're doing. Yeah, and I th- yeah, I think uh, I don't think you're going to see a lot of new entrants into the market though. That is my that's my sense. Not a ton of startups. I don't know. I mean, I think they're still happening. Oh, they happen, but I don't think at the rate. I mean, they... even here in Westfield, you know, you've got multiple clinics opening. So. Yeah. But they're not startups, though. Well, I mean, like, Coin isn't. Um, the alternative medicine one is. The, oh, really? Uh, trying to think what else. The e clinic. Yeah, I think that's that one. Assuming, I mean, who knows? I don't know. That's such a weird. <laughs> that's like. Coming soon. Yeah, it's eight great. months ago. Um, it's like don't look like a lot of work. So on I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. But I don't. The, you know, the, the coins a corporate practice, but I mean, I don't think. No, I just I don't think you'll see. I, and I I could be totally. This is totally anecdotal. Just my gut sense. You won't have as many people coming out of school and within five years opening up their own practice. That's because they have too much debt. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's just changed. I think. Um, it's just changed. I don't think that people have a desire to do that because of maybe the debt, maybe the, you know, it's a generational change. Well, and I think you have more women, you know, in yeah. the industry. A lot of them are working mothers or going to be working mothers, right? You know, and so then they're working part time. It's really hard to own a business if you're working part time, right. you know. So I mean, that takes away from you know what I mean. I mean, there's yeah, that's a, there's all these different components. Do you it. remember years ago there being such a shortage of DVMs? I think it started when I was in school. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's when that shift started to happen. That gender shift mm-hmm. over to like, it's probably 80, 20. Yeah. 85, 15. Yeah. Female to male now. Yeah. And that's, that's. The, Which then know. is creating the shortage over time. Right. Cause people because they drop the out of the workforce. Right. Or go down to part time. Or they go down to part time. Yeah. So two vets for one full time position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't, yeah. I don't know. What do you see coming down the pike? Do you have a really good sense of. Trends? Uh, no, I don't know if I necessarily have a good sense of. Really? No, I think people are going to enjoy working for larger companies because um, their pockets are deeper and the larger companies are figuring out how to be more attractive to the candidates. Yeah. So um, I think they will be able to um, uh, attract those people because they figured out the things that make them unattractive and have eliminated right. them. So. I think more and more people are willing to work for the larger companies because they're figuring that out. You have a couple that don't and they don't really care. Um, so they churn them, you know, and whatever, that's fine. But then you have a lot of the companies that are on the landscape that actually do care and that are creating, do want to be a, uh, you know, a resource or a place for veterinarians right out of school, right? you know, to apply for. And so I think those that you'll see more and more of that because there's going to be stability probably with that. Right. Um, that it's afforded to them as well as then um, more opportunities to manage, you know, debt, their education debt with right. those larger companies and and then growth. They're figuring out that there still can be growth opportunities within those companies. You know what I mean? So then they're not. It's It's just different. It's a different model than what we saw as the larger companies or the corporations when we were, you know, 15, 20 years ago. I'll make a very bold prediction. Bold prediction. You're actually going to commit to I'll something? I'll make a bold prediction. Okay. I think that you will see increased consolidation within the industry. I think that you will see... Um, I think that the stranglehold on DVM education will be broken by a very large corporate player. I think that at some point, the very large corporate player will say, I'm just going to start my own vet school. And they have the money to do it, and they can get it done for a fraction of the cost. And you have ready-made graduates right out the door. Yeah, 
I could totally see that happen because the problem you have now is that you can't have the tuition inflation that you've had in the past and the profession but be viable. Right. I mean, you just can't because it doesn't, the ROI on that is such that it just don't worry. It's not worth it. I mean, to spend right. that kind of money to make those kinds of wages. And I think that over the next decade, you'll see, you're kind of seeing this now, Why you know, a bunch of new entrants coming into the market and those guys are all going to eventually go to maybe three to five big, big players. And that's what you're going to have is you'll have those big players. And um, I think either they're going to do it, either they'll go around it and say, maybe start with tuition assistance such that if you work for us for five years, we'll take care of your debt. It'll be part of your comp package. And then they'll probably eventually that'll lead to why am I spending 200,000 bucks to pay this off for five years? I can educate this person after two years of undergrad. They have the prereqs, the prereqs they come here. I can give them a DVM degree for a fraction of that. All right. Maybe make it faster. And um, there's some place I think in Europe, this is it's, it's unrelated, but related that they've started to do that. The, the college, the, the, the company, some companies have gone to the colleges and said, this is the graduate we want. If you give them this degree, this, this certification, we'll hire them. There's a ready-made pipeline. And then they've gone and worked with the colleges and eventually they'll start their own. They'll, you'll just go there. And then once you do that, you'll become an employee of that company. All right. I mean, I think that's what you'll see. That's very bold, may or may not happen, but I think that eventually you're going to see that. And if that ever happens, it would be the death knell of brick and mortar in veterinary education as we know it. So what you're saying is that All Star is going to create our own uh, vet school. Negative. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I will say this, though, and I do think that you could educate, you could, you could impart that skill set for a fraction of the cost. There is no way you can ever convince me that that, that skill set that they impart on a graduate is necessarily worth seven times more today than it, is, than it was 20 years ago. Well, it's more than seven times, probably. Well, why haven't why haven't places like Purdue done that though? Like opened up their own veterinary clinics. Well, I don't think they with their name. They don't want to be in that well, business. That, well, because they all of their business comes from private practices referring to them, so they're not going to disrupt the field like that. That's not probably where they. I mean, they do have a practice that they that is a general practice that they vaccinate and they do right. stuff with and. Obviously, they have the emergency clinic there, right? You know, but um, I th I, I'll make another bold prediction. One of the corporate clients is going to figure it out and destroy, a la Chick Fil A. They're going to fight. They're going to figure out the secret sauce, and they're going to destroy because they have the resources to do it. And they'll be the go-to person to work for. Chick Fil A is not in school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spicy sandwich. No, oh, God. No, but no, you, like a spicy no, but I'm serious. Dog. You look at that business you model, you go, this is not a unique business model. You sell chicken sandwiches and other chicken products, basically. But yet, you are the fastest growing company in that sector, bigger than any of these other players that have been here for decades longer than you have. Right. What are you doing that's so different? I mean, from everybody else. And that's where I think someone could make a huge difference. If they came in and said, consistent experience, you provide the value you want, it, they could kill. I mean, just go and destroy. Now, other other places will eventually copycat and follow suit, but if you do it first, and that's where I think the consolidation will. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe, maybe there's apathy, and people just don't care. But I need to make a montage of all the things that Dad compares to Chick Fil A. Well, no, that's my consumer experience. Yes, you did, Arizona. That's my consumer experience. I look at that and I think, hey. I am all Chick Fil A has it down to a T, and if I could pick a fast food restaurant to go to now, it would be Chick Fil A one hundred percent of the time, because their customer it's the experience, same, their right? customer experience yeah. is great. It's same across the board. I think that I wonder if McDonald's was like that back in the day, back in the day before they just like exploded. Now they're everywhere, and like you know, you can't really make it the same everywhere because it's so big. I guess you could, but like it's just so big. And Chick Fil A is in that sweet spot where they're not. They're not everywhere, but uh, I think they it's, I are. Think it's cultural. I don't know. I think it's very much cult. You go to Chick Fil A in Tennessee and in Indiana. I mean, the employees are they're all they all act the same. They all appear to be joyful. It's just very. I, I don't know how they do it, but they do it, and it, it makes a difference because you you see it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think it's the training inside the recruit. It's everything. It's the whole pipeline of how they attract and recruit. And all Plus, you stuff. don't work. You don't. You don't work on Sundays. Right. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing you go, how is this even possible? That's unheard of. 
It's like saying I close at 12 o'clock every day here. It's unheard it's that of. that whole saying that I keep talking about. Good people work for good companies. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's the they opportunity. They probably do not have a hard time attracting good candidates because if you're a good candidate, you want to work for Chick-fil-A. They, yeah. they, you know, respect your time. They, you know, do, you know, there's probably all these things that, and you're like, all right, I want to get a job at Chick-fil-A. So their candidate pool oops, is much larger than McDonald's. Right. So then you can, you know, you have better people to pick from. Yeah. Less turnover. I'm sure there's probably some of that. Yeah. It's a, uh... It's fascinating. I mean, if there were another consumer experience that was like that that I could think of, I would use it. But that's just the one that always comes to mind because for whatever reason, they just have it dialed in. I mean, there's All-Star all Veterinary Clinic. What's that? <laughs> there's also what? There's also All-Star Veterinary Clinic. Oh, yeah. But I think that that's where, I mean, I, I just think that at, at some point, somebody's going to figure out that that's what consumers really want. So what I've taken away from this oh, conversation boy, we is go. that we should start selling chicken sandwiches. Yes. Along with our yes. services. Yes. Yes, and then just start, just start wearing Chick Fil A and outfits. And let's have our own secret sauce. Yes, it be yes, it can be called the All Star. The All Star sauce. sauce, and it's literally just All Star ketchup. Awesome Sauce. The Awesome Sauce at All Star. The All Star Awesome Sauce. Uh, there, is a- uh, there is there is a great idea that Mom had because they're talking just about that. Well, they're they're talking about you know taking over some part of the building and whatnot. And next to us, if people don't know, is a is a diner. Right, and so if we were to take that over, we have a all stars kitchen area where we cook for clients, and it would just be great. It'd be so great. While you're waiting for your appointment, go over there and grab an egg salad. An egg salad. You know <laughs> all star egg salad. Okay. Special. If you want, if you want, why don't you just go ahead and skip a step for your open restaurant? And just take that money and flush it down the toilet because that's pretty much what's going to happen. Okay. Or it can, or, or it can, or it can be a, like a pastry shop. It could be. A pastry shop where you cook for. We sell Dan's donuts. Dan's oh donuts God, and I am making. I am making Dan's donuts great for dogs. Ideas on the spot. You and talked to Hub, Hubner about that. She ran on this place. Feline fancy treats. You got it all. You can just bake to your heart's content over there. Dog and cat treats, and from noon to one, we cook for the employees. There you go. I had never heard of dog bakeries until I went over. To, I mean, I heard of them, but never been to one. And I actually went to one to pick up. Was it Harlow Harley? The pit bull that oh, rescued. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I bought a cake. I picked up a cake mm-hmm. that, you know, and it was pretty, it was like a legit bakery. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how those places stay open. I don't, I'm, I'm shy. It's one of those things where I don't know how they get enough business to keep the lights on. Yeah, it's got to be tough. That's honest. a lot of cakes. A lot of cakes. Mail order, maybe. Yeah. And they, or they might distribute into stores. Right. You know what I mean? Like they might be selling in stores. Like I know there's this one that sells inside PetSmart. Do you remember that guy years ago when we first opened? He was, I think, a Purdue MBA student at the time. And he came up with a pill pocket yeah. thing, and he went to his his, his friends at the project. The project goes, "You guys, I'm thinking I'm going to do this," and he did it. Yeah, and, but I don't remember. I don't know what happened to the company. He used to get they were like little, uh, almost like wafer type things full of peanut butter, and you would yeah. put the pills in there, and the dogs would eat it. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Wow. Yeah, pill. It was a. I was pill pockets. So maybe no, it's not the company pill pocket because they have that's a trade name or, or somebody different yeah speaking of donut or like just like pastries in general dan's actually makes the majority of their money off of people like or businesses ordering in large amounts oh, heck yeah. oh i'm sure to churches which i which i just thought well i mean i guess i wasn't surprised but i don't know yeah but think about this your margin is the, the mar- your margin is the same it just comes down to how much how many units you can move and margin is king so yes it's king <laughs> So um, that's another phrase of dad's. No, that's not. I okay. don't say margin is king. Yeah. Margin no. Is king. Margin is king. Yeah, you do. Chick-fil-A okay. has the best customer. Experience. So anyway, yes. Well, of course, it stands to reason that the more units you sell, the, the more. It'll hold. <laughs> I'm going to get a necklace from Maritime that <laughs> says hold fast. I got I to stop. Dad's getting this. He's getting. Uh, no, he's not. God. Anyway. Just you know what I picture when I think of that when I just said that I picture Dad in like a movie like Three Hundred with a sword, and like you know right. getting ready to go to war with like finances and saying it'll hold or like a something I don't know that's what I picture. No, in reality, it's yeah, that needs to be the next T-shirt. So we've got we got the T-shirt with the broom handle inside the car. Now we have the T-shirt Harrison of Dad holding the sword with a bunch of numbers in front of him. 
No, what you actually say. So instead of instead of in the movie, he says, "This is Sparta." Dad can be sick, sick kicking the guy off, saying, "This will hold." Yeah, there you go. Which yeah. is really, in reality, what you see is some middle-aged dude hauling ass across the field. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> oh god, too oh, god. funny. Though those those movies that are great because you watch those and you think, I mean, assuming I'm sure those things happen. You go, you had to just assume you weren't going to make it. There right. had to be the assumption, right? Because otherwise. Cause you're probably not. Probably not gonna make it. <laughs> you're probably not right. gonna make it. So you know, it's a uh, it's different. I guess is why you know the yeah. So those are, those are fa the, the bravery that it takes. Even movies. I was reading something about Braveheart yesterday, and I thought it's a movie interpretation. But those kinds of things did happen. Those battles of of uh, Sterling and stuff like that. And you think how the, the, it must have taken an, an enormous amount of bravery to do that to go against insane numbers, right? And do it anyway. So this is why we're going to do it, and we're going to do it, and we're going to win. And they do. But then I guess that's the lore of any kind of, you know, any war movie or whatever you watch. I mean, the insane odds, the opening scene, Private Ryan, you go, this is just, it's just a numbers game. Yep. I mean, you throw 10,000 guys there, 9,000 are going to, not going to make it, but that other thousand will get through and take care of the line. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. Oh, gosh. Anyway, I don't know what that has to do with hold fast, but or hold. It will hold. It will hold. It'll hold. That's what you say. When I was in eighth grade, okay, here's the story. You want to hear the story? <laughs> when I was in the eighth grade, uh, our homeroom teacher was named Greg Sitzler. And he was a nice guy, but he would always come in there and he'd go, All right, y'all, you got to hold it down in here. So it was a running joke when he would walk in, somebody would say, Hey, guys, we got to hold it down. And then everybody would go, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Shut up. Oh, gosh. So good old Mr. Sitzler. Yeah, he uh Yeah, he he was he was a good dude. There's a guy named this is some of these stories from eighth grade. A guy in there named Jimmy Trail. Jimmy Trail was missing a front tooth. He never got it replaced. No front <laughs> tooth. And he'd bring High Times the magazine. We're in eighth grade, mind you. He'd bring the the magazine High Times in there and read it. High Times is a, a marijuana magazine. Right. I don't know where he got it, but we were in the eighth grade. And Jimmy didn't have a front tooth. I don't know if Jimmy ever got that fixed. Front tooth so much because you're in the eighth grade and and everybody had their front teeth except for Jimmy. Except for Jimmy. So Jimmy's still around somewhere. Oh He's, uh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Well, everybody. We probably need to wrap it up for this Monday. Yep. We'll close out on Richie's toothless. <laughs> that, was, that was his name. He was missing a front tooth. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what is so funny about that? I don't know. It's just funny. It's the details that make a story. It is. Absolutely. Now you can picture in your mind Jimmy Trail, I am. mullet, missing front tooth. Yes, with his uh, Reading high marijuana times. things coming out of his tooth. There we go. Just holding it there. The spaceport. Maybe, maybe he did that on purpose. <laughs> so I get hold of that. Oh, gosh. All right, everybody. You can catch us most Mondays somewhere around 11, 30, 12, um, and on any of the podcast channels later. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but live on Mondays. So um, don't forget to check out the merch store. And do you have anything else to add as in closing? No. All right, everybody. We'll see you next next Monday, next time. On Five Boys in a Business, I'm Emily King. I'm Richie King. And Harrison, behind the ones and the twos. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. We're out.